there's a, a little bit of precedent with the person to person, the, the P2P, person to person uh, funding model. Prosper, Lending Club, uh, Zoba in the UK as well, where it's actually people lending to other people. Right? And this is a little separate from the microfinance and Kiva type model. Right? But there is, the interesting thing is those companies started on that path, but were unable to get over around a lot of the, a lot of the legal stuff around, like, around being able to, to uh, it was, it's, it's illegal for them to basically, you can't just be a marketplace, you know, Prosper Lending Club, you can't be just purely a marketplace because you actually have to hold those assets. You have to hold the risk because of the way the SEC regulations are. Um, I, will the SEC change? I don't know. There's some creative ways to, perfectly legal creative ways to address the accredited investor stuff. So for example, if you're putting together a, like an LLC investment corporation, all of your members need to be accredited unless they are a managing member that holds a title, right? So if you're secretary, right, uh, technically uh, they don't have to be accredited. With that LLC model that you run across the problem of, you know, the managing members being able to commit the business to, you know, a contract? Speak up. Yeah. What was that? Uh, with the LLC model you're mentioning, you instead of having you know the non-accredited investor, you know, whatever, um, just have them as a managing member. Don't you run into the problem of they would be able to commit the uh, investment corporation to a contract? Well, in the interest of full disclosure, we didn't actually go. For, all of our investors are accredited. I just kind of stumbled across this uh, vagary in the law as we were as we were setting it up. So we haven't run into that particular kind of I just put my two cents in. I think we got enough socialism. I think uh, Europe is not cradle bit incubation. That, uh, I mean, I think we have a lot of incubation here. We just don't need to get back on our game. And, uh, you know, if, if, the, if, the, if it was easier to go IPO, and, or easier to go IPO. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. I was just making a, a case for uh, that uh, we've got a lot of innovation here that we've got to open up. We've got to have IPOs easier to, you know, without all the regulation to go IPO. We've got to really, we've really got to open up our own entrepreneurs here. Uh, I, don't, I hope we don't follow a European model because um, I think that will stifle that innovation. And uh, I think if whatever the new model is, I think we've got to look toward what has been successful and, you know, change it for current times. But there's a lot of, you know, success coming out of Silicon Valley that we need to emulate. I think that's part of it. and family around and then a sophisticated angel around. Um, I actually work for an organization that does kind of the early funding. We're in the venture capital continuum, but we'll do kind of $50,000 grants to kind of validate, you know, what is the market potential of this uh, or to actually get a company started and up to $500,000 to really, you know, kind of pre-seed an angel funding. But I think what we found in some of these opportunities, uh, when you're, you're talking about the whole long tail opportunity is that a lot of the, the, the web 2.0 kind of freemium models, uh, you're talking about lower cost to operate, um, they've effectively created uh, lower total market opportunities there. Not because of more competition, but because the model has been disrupted in terms of, you know, you've, you've got something that you're charging $50 a piece for, and then somebody enters that market and completely charges nothing because they want to do it on a lifestyle ad model. So for us, we might fund it as a, you know, this sounds like a great opportunity, We'll throw a little bit of money at it, but we, when we look at it, we say, in this market, you do everything right, you know, what we see is this is probably a $5 million a year business. It's not something we can fund at that next stage because it's not, you know, the angels and the VCs aren't going to follow that. So that's, with some of the companies we've seen that, that are doing it well, have basically developed core competencies and have basically used those tools to basically build, you know, two or three uh, you know, a couple million dollar a year, you know, lifestyle things, and they're just sharing the talent to make that work. That's kind of the only way that I've seen people kind of sustain around that. Kind of a social, like a, it's like kind of like a pooled risk shared, a shared venture model, really, right? 